This is your Tech News Briefing for Wednesday, October 12th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. With inflation high and economic uncertainty on the rise, more customers are putting big purchases, like personal computers, on hold. Shipments of PCs fell nearly 20 percent in the third quarter, the fastest pace in decades, according to research firm Gartner. That's having a knock-on effect on an essential part of those devices. Memory chips. Semiconductor makers, including Samsung and Micron, have issued grim forecasts, lowering their profit estimates. So what does this mean for the broader chip market? Joining us to discuss this is our Semiconductors reporter, Asa Fitch. Hi, Asa. Thanks for joining me. Hi, thanks for having me. You know, when we say memory chip demand is falling, how much of a dip are we actually talking about? It's a pretty substantial dip. The average price for the type of RAM that goes into flash drives and things like that has fallen about 28% in the third quarter compared to the prior quarter. Computer memory, the kind of memory that uh, helps apps run faster on your phone or computer, that has fallen by about 15% quarter to quarter in the past quarter. So it's been a pretty substantial drop and a pretty quick drop. Can you tell us a bit about what the market and competition is like for memory chips? The market in memory is very volatile. It has a lot of ups and downs. You know, it's really tied to consumer demand more than even other parts of the computing and electronics industry are. So if you see fluctuations in smartphones or in PCs and things like that, memory just tends to go up and down a lot more. It's it's a more commoditized item, electronic item within that overarching sort of electronic supply chain. So as a result, it's kind of treated almost like a commodity and it goes up and down quite a lot. I guess maybe now is a good time to kind of get into what segment of the semiconductor market memory makes up and if this slowdown is hitting any other segments of that industry. Yeah, memory is around 27% of the overarching semiconductor industry's estimated revenues this year. So that's a pretty substantial amount. Um, The slowdown we're seeing is affecting other parts of the industry, though. Um, Demand for all kinds of chips is in jeopardy because of consumer sentiment, because of rising interest rates, spending power is being challenged. So we're seeing that kind of broader economic effect basically trickling into all sorts of things like PCs, like laptops. What have the manufacturers of memory chips said about this slowdown? Well, manufacturers of memory chips are generally just, you know, they're used to this kind of slowdown because the memory industry is very cyclical. This one comes at a a difficult time in that a lot of companies want to grow their production. There are uh, incentives all over the world for people to expand their factory footprints. And companies like Samsung and Micron who are some of the major, the biggest memory manufacturers in the world, are building new plants. They're growing. Both of those companies are making huge investments in the U.S. We're talking the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars. So, you know, it's kind of an awkward time for prices to go down. And executives are saying that they're kind of bracing. They're doing things for the, in the short term, like slowing down capital spending, um, just being more conservative in how they use their money. At the same time, they are continuing to invest for the long term, continuing to think about huge outlays of capital on on major expansions of their operations. So it's it's kind of a mixed bag in that sense, too. The, the, the short term is bad, but the long term potentially could be quite good because people see that the demand is there from all kinds of things, from autonomous driving to, you know, um, newfangled AR, VR stuff that's going to consume more chips and need more memory. I mean, so given, as you say, this is a volatile segment of the market, when do the big players expect to see this turn around? And I guess in some ways, should they have seen this coming given the massive spike in demand that happened during the pandemic for consumer electronics? Yeah, you know, a lot of people have been sort of predicting the downfall of the chip market for a long time because it is cyclical and, and, you know, it was time for a cycle to happen for, it's been time for a long time. So maybe to some extent they should have seen it coming, and and some did kind of see it coming in in that respect. But if you ask analysts, they seem to expect that the market, at least for computer memory, will bottom out in the first half of next year and then you know start to pick up again. But this market is really unpredictable, and as we were talking about before, it's very susceptible to the fluctuations in consumer demand and the the overarching macroeconomic picture. So there are a lot of contingencies in those forecasts. It's hard to say whether 
the first half of next year really will be the, the bottom or, or whether there could be a, a longer uh, slump for the industry. Hey, so you're talking about this slowdown in demand. Does that mean the chip shortage that we've been talking about for, you know, it seems like years is finally over? You know, strangely enough, it doesn't. There are still a lot of segments of the chip industry that are in shortage or that have longer lead times that are just stretched because there are areas where chip demand is still very strong. Um, If you look at the automotive industry, for example, automakers are still having trouble getting the chips that they need. Other people who make medical devices and other kinds of gadgets and electronics still are having problems. So what we're seeing now is that there are some chips in the, not to use a, a, a pun, but there, there's some chips in the armor of the, of the chip shortage story, but it's still happening because the demand is affecting certain chips like CPUs and GPUs and sort of higher end computing, uh, the brains of your computers kind of thing. But that kind of fall off in, in demand and consumer sentiment we're seeing isn't affecting sort of older generation chips and different sort of commoditized chips that automakers and other, other folks need. So it's, it's become a, a more of a mixed picture, whereas uh, previously it was just a general shortage in, that was affecting everybody. All right, Asa Fitch, our semiconductors reporter, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks a lot. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.